In task one, you put all of the information in your work break, breakdown structure into um, Microsoft Project. You have everything in front of you. Um, and now in this stage, what you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to start trying to make more sense of uh, what we have in our project. So from if you're not back into the um, project, go ahead and open your project back up again and you will notice at this time that the entire duration of your project, if you look here, the entire duration says that it's only one day. Um, that's if you use the automatic scheduling function that was down here at the bottom. We know that one day to complete this entire task is, is, is not realistic. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to put in some more realistic dates. Um, as a matter of fact, if you will go in here to develop agenda and schedule, um, let's go ahead and put that, let's just leave that at one day. Let's see if that'll just, there we go, get rid of the question mark. Develop a budget, let's develop a budget, let's just keep that at one day. I develop a communication plan uh, at three days. Outline uh, venue options uh, one day. Make team arrangements, we'll bring that whoop, one day and then publish the general plan. Let's take that to two days. Okay, at that point your screen should look like this. Uh, you will notice when you're looking at that screen now that the early planning stage now shows that it's gonna take three days. Oh, sorry, right here, three days. And the reason it says three days here is that that is the longest period of time uh, that we have for any of the subtasks. You can see that happening over here in your Gantt chart. So your Gantt chart is showing you that everything basically could start on the very first day, that develop a communication plan is going to take you three days to complete it, and so therefore if everything started on time and you had unlimited resources, that that total span, that total time associated with this is three days. You'll also notice that Microsoft Project has a default to where it doesn't count Saturday and Sundays as days. So three days really is Thursday, Friday, and then also on Monday. Okay, so now we've put in some realistic days there um, to get us going. The next thing that we need to do is we need to say that, that they're really, these items really are linked in some way. That the pre-planning should happen before the early planning, or the early planning rather should happen before uh, the planning, and, and just try to start getting some linking um, that we're trying to get going on. If you're trying to follow this along, this would be on page two of your task two uh, instructions, and we are now in about the middle of the page, because what we want to do now is we want to start linking these tasks. Again, we have more realistic dates. However, one way to link tasks um, at the highest level is if you left click on the column task name, and it highlights everything inside of that, we can go in and we can link each and every one of these tasks. Uh, you remember from previous videos uh, about the, um, the linking to where we have dependencies, where one thing is dependent upon another. And so that's what we're doing now. We're trying to say there's some sort of dependency that something that one task needs to be finished before the other. I put all the tasks make sure that I am in the task view. Also make sure that I'm in the Gantt chart view so that you can see the Gantt chart. So I'll go up to task. I'll go over to the scheduling section and you can see a link that says link the selected tasks which says that we're about to link all of them. Alright and once again if you hover over each one of these icons it'll show you exactly uh, what it's trying to tell you. If I left click you will see immediately that this has started to stretch us out. These things are now stretched out that the early stuff has to happen before the middle stuff which happens before the other and that each one of my subtasks has to finish before the other ones. Also as soon as I linked everything together it also put into here um, predecessors. These weren't in here before. So predecessor once again is showing that issue management has a predecessor which is number two. This is row two. So issue management 
is linked to project management and that the predecessor project tracking has to complete before issue management starts. You can see that also happening over here with the Gantt chart. The Gantt chart says project tracking takes a day. As soon as it finishes I can start issue management. Issue management takes one day um, and so on and so forth. So all the predecessors now are listed out here on the side. You can also see that from our early planning where we used to have only three days for this to take, now that we have linked everything together it really is going to take nine days now to do the early planning which is a day to develop, a day to do the budgeting, three days for that, dot dot dot, whatever else. Five days here, an additional four days, so it's going to take nine days. So with that stated it kind of shows you uh, where we are, the links um, going on here. So I'm going to let you look at that for just one second as I pause the video. Some of you may be a bit confused right now because the uh, you may not be actual you may not be able to see the predecessor column. Um, what you can do to see that predecessor is it may be hidden um, because your Gantt chart actually can move. And if you turn it left, if you move it left or right, you may be at the point to where you can't see a predecessor column. So if you move it further to right, you can see that there are other things hidden underneath there that you just haven't seen yet as well. So uh, that's a tip there for you to be able to find those. Uh, another thing that you'll notice here on these predecessors is we just automatically changed a bunch of things, linked them, and they may not need to be linked. Uh, an example may be that developing a budget, uh, developing a communication plan, um, and these other tasks that are associated with this, maybe they don't need to go sequentially. Maybe they're things that could all happen um, at the same time. For example, maybe develop a budget does have to happen before, um, sorry, uh, maybe develop the agenda does need to happen before the develop a budget happens. So leaving Five is the predecessor, again, develop a budget, it's line five. So leaving the predecessor as five here makes sense. Maybe developing a communication plan could be started at the exact same time. So maybe on this one, maybe the right answer is, and what I did was I just clicked the down arrow, maybe the predecessor that it needs is also five. Um, and you see how I clicked one and got rid of the other. Similarly, we can go and we can click on the next one down. Uh, maybe that's what needs to happen. Um, and we can move forward. So you can see what's happening now as I've changed the predecessors on each one of these. We're beginning to line things up. All of these tasks can happen at the same time, right? They're not linked to each other. We're also beginning to decrease the number of days that it creates for each one of these things to happen for us. So this is where the art of project management starts playing in because we've gone through the science of listing all of the different uh, items that are associated with each one of these tasks. However, now we can start doing the art of what should start first, how long should it go, are there other things that can work in here um, that, that matter. Uh, you can also see that here with the predecessors from this drop down menu that I was showing you earlier if it has several things that need to happen at the same time before you can start it you could click multiple items I'm just gonna click these they may not matter to us but you can see that whoop, they're already linked to it's already linked to another task so we couldn't put that in there however you can see that you could you could put several different things that needed to be uh, accomplished before that so that's what's going on uh, with this piece of it. The other part is that you can go in and each one of these states that it can, the, the auto scheduler has selected a date for it to start. However, you have the option of going in and changing the start date to whatever you want it to be. So you can change the start date, you can change the finish date, you can change the predecessors, you can also go in here and make these things to where it makes more sense um, 
for the days that are in there. That's what we're trying to get accomplished now is just try to get your plan to where it makes sense with the predecessors that are linked and then also watch your Gantt chart to see what's happening here and see what happens to your overall duration as you go down through it. All right, thank you.